Who do I have to blame for my struggles, for my isolation and loneliness? I want to point a finger at party goers, if only they had more sense, those who have traveled between different regions, if just they could stay put. Who do I have to blame? Maybe it is that we didn't lock down soon enough, or maybe our lockdown is too harsh and our economy will never fully recover. Other countries have the vaccine, and here we are with an end in sight so close, yet so far. That anticipation, that feeling of anxiety, of near completion, is a feeling which our patriarch Jacob must have felt as his brother approached him with an army. When he laid down that night, I can imagine him asking who he had to blame for the situation he was in. Having stolen his brother's birthright, having betrayed his father's trust, it is easy to push the blame on others. His mother, who escalated the situation, his brother for not being smart enough to discover the trick, if only he hadn't sold the soup. Even with God for creating this whole situation, this whole story. And so, as he slept, we find that he had a wrestling match, a battle that changed him. Who was it that he struggled with? Some say it was God or an angel of God. Others that it was his brother, Esav, that evil doer coming to best him one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the night. And I favor another explanation. As his anxiety deepened, as his world darkened, Jacob, the patriarch who brought about our evening worship, wrestled with that darkness and fear and maybe even loathing inside of himself. He wrestled and he won. What kind of wrestling is this? Rabbi Josh Weinberg writes, the word, the Yavek, Hebrew for struggle in this text, is explained by Rashi with an intriguing and elliptical phrase, to struggle is to embrace. When we physically wrestle with someone from afar, it is almost indistinguishable from the action of embracing. The image of two people locked in struggle, wrestling, is seemingly identical to that of two people locked in embrace, hugging. The language itself plays the same visual games, the Hebrew for struggle and embrace, according to Rashi, derive from the same two-letter root, vet kuf, linking these two, word, two words to say that to struggle also must be to embrace. His struggle and his embrace was one. And through that, through that, Jacob changed so that when he saw his brother again, he was able to overcome his anxiety at coming face to face with his fear. And his brother accepted him as he was now. Who do we have to blame for our struggles, for this moment of darkness and anticipation? It matters less 
who we have to blame for our struggles, then how we struggle by hugging, by embracing this anxiety as part of ourselves. For then we can come face to face with God and prevail. Or as our text says, for I've seen God face to face and my soul was saved. The journey from sickness to health is made more difficult because of the weight. The journey from darkness to light because of the weight the journey from now until the world transformed, a world more redeemed because of the weight. The hardest thing is the anxiety. The hardest thing is to wait. On Yom Kippur, at Musaf, we sing, Ochila Le'el, I shall await the eternal, I shall entreat God's favor. I shall ask God to grant my tongue eloquence. In the midst of the congregated nation, I shall sing of God's strength. I shall burst out in joyous melodies for God's works. The thoughts in one's heart are each of ours, each of ourselves to arrange. O eternal one, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise, even as we wait. With the anxiety of waiting, we wrestle and embrace. We come face to face, and through it, we live transformed. Shabbat Shalom.